Hey, Sha, how's it going? Uh, it's going well, Tom. How about you? Good. Let's see. Um, Hey, Nitesh, how's it going? Yeah, hi, hi, John. Am I, am I audible? Yes. Hi, sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, hi, sorry. Got a, I picked up another meeting right before this, so unfortunately, um, fortunately, I'm foreseeing this starting a couple minutes late now. So, um, let's see. All right, let's go ahead the pull request. All right, that's right. You did the classifier. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I saw this, but I didn't get a chance to run it yet. So, let's see. The one thing I did notice, so yeah, I guess I, haven't, I didn't get a chance to do the whole thing yet, review the whole thing, but I did notice that we have a, um, you have an example through Python, but we need an example through the command line as well. Um, so let me just make a note on that. Um, Um, so, oh, and I think, you know what, this would be, here's a good opportunity here. Maybe we will just do this all together and, um, I will show you guys how to do the console test thing. Um, yeah, this is a great opportunity for that. And then we will have a video clip of that. I was talking to Yash, um, last week about how, um, about how, um, YouTube videos are very useful for people learning things, um, and I personally don't watch a lot of YouTube videos, um, but um, we should have some um, because they're they're useful. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I never think to watch a YouTube video. I like never even it never even crosses my mind. And actually, I'm, nah, he shared a bunch of good ones with me, so I should be looking at YouTube more. Um, let's see. Okay, so classifier. Oh, come on. So we have a pull request to add XGBoost classifier. And so we're going to go over that. And then, uh, do you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Yeah, actually, I found an issue that the default values in a in a model are not actually the defaults value. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's present in the library. Let's say, for example, Exibus regressor. The actual default value is not present in our uh, default value in Exibus regressor. So that that should be uh, correct. I, I think I'm going to need a little demo of this one because I'm not following exactly. Um, but okay, yeah. so we'll we'll get to that. Okay, so and then Shaw, what uh, what do we have on the docket for you today? Uh, I am I'm done with the test cases for the anomaly detection model. I'm nice. hopefully gonna make a pull request by tomorrow. Sweet. Um, yeah. Uh, there's once there's actually a couple small things I want to talk to you about. Uh, it was regarding one of the test cases, mm -hmm. and I was hoping we could discuss that. All right, great.
Great. All right. Good stuff. All right. Let's just dive in then. So, all right. First, we're going to do, um, well, you know, we'll wait for anybody to trickle in before we do the classifier because I want to show the, um, um, I want to show how we're going to add the console, um, um, the console examples. So, uh, let's jump into the, um, the anomaly detection model first. So, um, so you're done with the test cases and you want to talk about one of them. So could you, um, could you share maybe some code with yeah, us yeah. or like a branch or yeah. just share your screen? Uh, yeah, I'll just present my screen. I think that cool. will be a bit more clear. Great. Just give me a moment. Okay, so let me go here and then let me just. All right. So, um, this is the test case I want to talk about. Um, I use this code uh, from. Sorry, one second. I got to uh, get my notes up on another, another screen because I want to make sure we're taking notes on this. Um, let's see. All right. Okay, go for it. Yeah. So um, this module test zero to predict. Um, this basically, um, I was trying to. Uh, I use the code from uh, the simple linear regression test case to sort mm -hmm. of get an idea of how test cases are framed. Yeah. Right. So what what this test case does for linear regression is it checks if the prediction is within ten percent of uh, the actual value. Mm -hmm. But for anomaly detections, all we have are the labels zero or one. So uh, this doesn't make sense there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so what do we do here? Okay, so what is our test data? So test one CSV. Um, okay, mm -hmm. and all right, so and I take it test one CSV is within the root of this directory here. Um, can you open the yeah, folder? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me get... All right. All right, cool. So... Uh... Right, so this is what test one dot csv looks like. Mm -hmm. I basically have like. So why is your label uh, features? Yeah, why is my label? Okay, so in this case, and you just want to pick. Okay, so so this is one of those where basically, um, all right. So okay, so let's see at a high level here. All right, so we're writing a test for the anomaly detection model. And we have A through K are our features, and then Y is our, our label. And so we want to modify the prediction method or the prediction test from the SLR model to make it so that the um, instead of seeing if the output value is within 10%, we just do sort of a, a yes, no, because this is a classification problem, essentially, right? Um, with, with what we're looking at. OK, so let's flip back to the um, test cases. And what we're going to do here is, so you get the, the predict method yield, or the predict function yields um, three, three things, the index and the feature, actually, I think that's the key. Yeah, the key, the, the record key, the features, and the predictions. And so you can see here we're getting, yeah, so features Y is the correct one, prediction Y value. Um, and so basically what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to, you know, you can either compare directly and say, you know, if assert equal, um, you can do self dot assert equal correct comma prediction, and then that will make it so that the test case will do um, every single one and check if they're exactly correct. However, that's not gonna, you know, you, <laughs> chances that's, are you're yeah, gonna exactly yeah that, yeah. So that's what? A bit redundant, right? Yeah. So because what because what I'm doing in test zero one is basically calculating the F one score or the accuracy. That helps me check how many of the test cases or how many how how well my model is doing. Yeah. So, so I think so you're yeah, okay. So so what you would do 
here is okay you're already doing that with accuracy i think i see what you're saying yeah i mean this is in this case you have your your model is 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 it sounds like you've implemented your accuracy method to be what the body of this predict test would be um but yeah the predict test here would basically be you know sum up how many you got correct right and then check that the number you got correct was within some acceptable range right so yep um and it sounds like that's what you did for your accuracy method uh yeah okay. something similar what what i actually did was i calculated the number of false positives and uh, false negatives and used that to calculate the f1 score of the model okay um okay yeah and your report so your what you, the accuracy method returns is the f1 score is what you're saying yep okay and uh, just to confirm, you have a you have some comments in the code saying that that's what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, cool. <laughs> just checking. Um, um, but yeah, so yeah, for this guy, uh, I would just say, why don't uh, I would just do for the at the risk of of re-implementing it, um, and and I'll uh, at the risk of re-implementing similar functionality, I would just go here and basically sum up the number you got correct, and you know say you know correct divided by total and say what's the percentage you got correct and you know make that like you know 90 percent is what we're shooting for um to get correct and then do you know assert greater the percent you got correct 90 and and the reason why you, you want to do that in this case is because we're going to change the way that the accuracy method works um and suhan sudhan has been working on that oh, and hello. so when that happens um we're going to want to um we're, we're going to want to have these predict methods lying around to make sure that, you know, we're, we're transitioning everything the correct way. Um, because if, as we remove accuracy methods, then it's helpful to have another test case that replicates similar functionality. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't qu uh, quite catch the last part. I think uh, my net just broke. Could you repeat? Yeah, so that? basically we're, we're going to, we want to implement, in this case, you know, it seems a bit redundant. But we're going to want to implement it because we're in the middle, and this is sort of like a you know uh, a all of us working together teamwork sort of situation more than a um, a, a code yeah, situation. Um, but yeah, and so because we're doing this change to accuracy and the way accuracy is working, we're going to want to have a second test in here. It'll be helpful to have this second test, which is a you know a similar implementation of the one above it. Um, but it'll help us when we go to change the accuracy um stuff because we'll now we'll know that things are still functioning correctly um because that's going to be a large code change and, and the more passing tests we have the more it can help us find the ones that are really failing um, so for that reason we will want to re-implement that that the you know sort of the the logic behind checking the percentage of things we got correct within this test method uh right so what i'll do is um I'll do something like self dot assert uh, greater prediction comma the number of uh, examples I got correct, something like that, right? Yep, yep, yeah, because you know how many are in the file, so yeah, you can just do that. Yeah, cool. great. All right, so let's right. see, and I'll just write this in the meeting minutes. So, um, so for the test zero two predict method will. Uh, assert greater the number we got correct um, uh, to the number two x percent of the number of examples in the test. All right, great. Cool. Um, Sorry, do you have right. something else? Uh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, I couldn't quite figure out how to uh, like use config to take a float as an input. Hmm. Okay, so let's see what... Um... Sorry, one second. Let me just write that down. So issue using config to take float as an input. So let's like see I what used... you tried here. I used G... Um... I used uh, grep command to like get some insights on that. Uh, mm -hmm. That didn't work. So 
what what uh, what will do is i think i spoke to saksham about this he said that he's going to help me so i think um i'll sort this out well so let's uh well i'd like to i'd like to just look at it one second so you wanted to take one of the config parameters as a as a float right right so if you can scroll down to your config structure um let's see I haven't written any code yet. I was just trying to find out if there was any documentation for that. Yeah, you know, actually, that's <laughs> you just hit on a really good point. Um, we need uh, documentation, a whole page at least. Page on config. Um. Yeah, okay, so, one second, okay, um, okay, yeah, we need a whole documentation page on config, so, and you were having an issue taking config as a float, so, yeah, obviously, there's no documentation page on this, so this is why you're having an issue doing this, <laughs> so, all right, but let's just real quick, we can, uh, wait, can you keep presenting, um, because we'll just do it right, real right, quick right. here, Sorry. okay, no oh. worries. Cool, cool, cool. It should only take a second. Oh. Okay. Great. So oh. just add another line and add another line right here. And then you can just say whatever you want it to be named, colon, float. And float. Yeah, actually, that should be the end of it, quite honestly. Um, that's but it? yeah, I think that's, that's it. That's literally it. Yeah, I believe this is it. Now, you may need it before those equals fields, um, but you should be doing equals fields to give it a description anyway. So you just probably, you know, k colon float equals field, and then whatever you want it to be. And if you want it to have a default value, then you say comma default, and then whatever its value should be. So. so I don't. I don't want it to be a field, right? I just need it to be like sort of a hyperparameter. Oh well, that is so. Basically, everything. So it's a field within this config structure. Um, oh, all right. So like, and actually, that's a good thing that we'll explain when we write the documentation. So, explain that field is a uh, means a property of. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. So now we should be able to say, um, so yeah, so it will now throw an error since you didn't give a default value, it will throw an exception if you don't have yeah, a value so for that. So now, there, yeah, so I can set a default value here or, uh, should I just set it directly in the function? You can set a default value. Uh, you set a default value here. So you do comma default and then what do you default equals whatever you want, or sorry, within the field call, the call to the field function there. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. So, comma default. Um, That's it. That should be it. Yep. So, and yeah, we uh, need. We obviously we need documentation on this. This is a really good point. Um, I can actually help with this because uh, I I want I wanted to like understand how this works. So okay, maybe great. as I'm exploring this, I could. I could write something. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, I wonder where we should put that. That's a, okay. So now, if we're thinking about where should we put this, um, let's see. Until perhaps maybe under tutorials. Yeah, probably under tutorials. Model sources, data flows, yeah. neural networks, config. Right where we have uh, the documentation for features and everything else. I think that would be a nice place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and let's we will we can probably put it under under the t usage tutorial section, and then we can talk about we talk we have a section talking about the config, and we can link um, from the the example config to the full documentation about what con how to do config. Um, let's yep. see, uh, put this under usage tutorials. Um, Make sure to link from uh, my SLR config uh, All right, sweet.
Um, yeah, and so this should, now it should be accessible as, as self.parent.config.k. Um, and then when you do, um, when you do, um, let's see, you have, yeah, with your tests, in your tests when you instantiate the model. Um, if you could flip over the test real quick, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So self.model. Yeah, if you just say, you know, k equals whatever, that'll change k. Yeah, guard. Sweet. All right. Um, anything else on this? Uh, not on this, but uh, you told me to ask you how documentation is written once I'm done with the test case and everything. Aha. Okay, well, that's actually a perfect segue into the next thing. So, because um, we're going to talk about the how to write the... the um, we're going to talk about how to write the examples for um, the XGBoost classifier. So, all right, great. Um, and then I also want to say, so Sudhanshu, do you have any, I saw you have, uh, um, um, we, we, we talked about phase four or phase five. Um, we're almost done with that. I think there were just two test cases within the main uh, module that are failing right now and that's i mean obviously we're having a hard time uh seeing that in the ci because of that unit test issue um but do you do have you gotten a chance to look at that yet or and do you have anything else you want to talk about oh we can't hear you suit aren't you Oh, we still can't hear you. Can anybody hear him? It says you're off mute, but it doesn't say that you're talking. Yeah, maybe maybe try rejoining the call. All right. Okay. Well, then while he's doing that, Saksham, how's it going? Do you have uh, anything you want to talk about today? Hey, uh, no. I was just joined the meeting to see what everyone's up to. Cool. Uh, and I left some comments in the Gitter chat and also on my pull request. Okay. Yeah, so am hey. I audible now? Yes, you are. Yay. Okay, so uh, I feel like uh, there's something wrong with the async I part. Okay. So I will have to like look into it. Uh, when you say the async I.O. part, um, oh, yeah. Oh, the A enter, A exit. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's this is a name. common, yeah, I've run into this a million times. Okay, so let's just make a note of this. Going with the async I.O. part. Uh, Okay, um, so let's see. Um, issue with, or am I sharing my screen? Yes, I am sharing my screen, okay. Or AX it not found. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, where's that PR? Okay, I want to do this real quick, and then I want to talk about. Um, or no, let's talk about. Let's talk about the. Um, okay, so we were just talking about. Let's cover this. Remind me to cover this in case I forget. Um, but we were going to talk about um, how do we write, and then, so we were talking about Shaw's um, anomaly detection model, and then um, he said that, um, you know, the next step there is writing the documentation. Um, and so we were also going to cover um, how to do the console examples with the XG, XGBoost classifier. Um, model. So we're going to do, okay, so how to write examples or how to write 
uh, doc string. Okay, so. Okay, so we'll cover this as a part of XGBoost classifier model. All right. Sweet. All right, let's dive into this then. Um, okay. Uh, hey, so I have another meeting. Okay. Uh, can, can we talk first? Uh, what did you want to talk about? Yeah, I left some comments on the oh, okay. chat and yeah. Let's see. Oh yeah. So this is with regards to some of Saksham stuff. So I will take a look at this and, or sorry, no, with regard to Sutanchu stuff. And so we're going to take a look at this and see if that might fix the issue with the accuracy um, importing. So thanks for getting back on that. And then um, let's see. So, and then the other thing was, oh, I think I'm just going to merge this. I think I just hadn't merged it yet. So, um, unless, wait a minute, did I respond I with a question? Comment, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I responded with, oh, it did the thing where I forgot to respond. I hit the wrong button. Okay. Um, yeah, I would just wanted to say yes on the logger info. And then can you also create an issue so that we can track that thing in DF? Um, because we should do that. Um, since we're here, can you change, yeah, can you change it to logger info? Cause I don't think I can make a, um, a suggestion to do that. Oh, I did it twice. Weird. No. All right. For the PyTorch plugin. Um, me. yeah, just change it just in, in PyTorch with, with the info stuff. Right. Okay, so for DF, I'll create an issue to track it and yep. then, okay. All right. Cool. Uh, thank you. All right. Yeah, no problem. All right, thanks, Sakshan. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Okay, so all right, we're going to dive into um, um, the console test stuff. So, so XG Boost. Okay. Um, let's see. And where's what I want? Okay, so Um, so I'm going to add your, add your branch as a remote here. So, get remote add, uh, get github.com. So I'm just adding your your branch here as one of my remotes so that I can pull it down. All right, so we'll pull down your changes, check out the classifier. Okay, oh, XG boost. All right, and so tests. Let's open them both here. So classifier. Okay, great. So here's the classifier. And then we have an example of the Irish classification. Very good. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to look at the, and I think we have, so I did this for model SLR. So this is basically the, the gist of, of testing the doc string here um, with the console console um, 
the console test plugin. So we're going to grab this and we're going to look at, let's see, test classifier model. And I'm just going to dump this in here for a second. Um, and we want run console test. Okay, great. All right. So we're just going to add this method here, which is test doc string. Okay, but this is also a set of class. Let's see what we got here. So we can just throw this in a new test case. Um, because we don't need any of that setup stuff. Um, and all we have to do is pass it the class that we want to test the doc string of. So we're going to pass it. Classifier model. All right. Let's actually move this to the top here. Or no, we'll keep it at the bottom. All right. So, and then this one you had, okay, you were running the example. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. So this is, yeah, that's, that's good. We'll leave that there because, um, we can, we can, we can safely, we can safely do that. We don't need to, we don't need to um, change that since you're already running it. But, all right, okay, so now we'll go to the doc string, and you have this example usage here, which is basically run this file. Um, all right, so we're gonna put command line usage, and we're gonna basically figure out, okay, so you don't have, ah, let's see. Um, okay, so first off, I guess we have, um, this should be Iris. Um, and then secondly, because we're doing command line stuff, we're going to need the, uh, the Iris data set. So, um, where did the Iris data set go? Um, so we have a command to download it somewhere. All right, there they are. Right, iris training and iris test. So we put a regular code block, console, download the training data, download the test data, and then this is basically, this is sort of the, the magic part of this, is we just put test, and now it's going to run that. Um, and it's just going to check the return codes. Um, so if those commands, uh, you you need to make sure the commands are running exit with a with a bad return code um, if they fail. So, for example, curl. I found out recently, um, unless you pass dash lowercase f, it doesn't actually exit if there's a bad something bad happens. So it's important important to do that uh, or to check. All right. So command line usage um, first download the uh, test training. And test files, and then run the train command. Actually, wait a minute. I think if I remember correctly, those those files need some slight modification to them. Yes, yes, they do. Um, yeah, I think that was to, oh yeah, okay, changing the, yeah, whatever format they had it in, it's not the same as the format uh, 
that we like it in. So, all right. Um, so we change the format, download the training test files, uh, change the headers to default format. Um, and I'm not sure what the deal was, but they don't actually name. Yeah, they don't. Oh, the first row is, I think, the the encodings of the, um, I th believe the first row with this data set is the encodings of the um, um, classifications. Um, but we obviously want real CSV headers. Um, for some reason, they don't do it that way. So we just change those. So change the headers to DFFML format. Uh, the first row is an encoding of the classifications. Uh, we want uh, CSV headers for the column names. Okay. So run the training command. All right, and this is where we get into how do we convert this. So DFML train. Um, so features. Data float ten. Um, let's see. So, um, is this running? Does this work? Natesh, have you run this? Yeah. Uh, I have run the uh, Python files. Yeah, it's it's working fine. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. So I think we we have a bit of a an, an implementation issue here then. So because we we let's see. Python examples Irish classification. Okay, great. Um, Yeah, there's some uh, warnings. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, so, what what were the warnings? I didn't even read them. No. Oh, yeah, this has been going on. I don't think this is our issue. This is something underlying. Yeah, SK learn. Um, unless it is. Let's see. Yeah, that's something in an underlying library. Um, so that's not our issue. Nothing we can fix. All right. Um, so let's see. Um, okay. The the thing that I'm concerned about here is is features is just taking data, and I think that this works fine for this example data set that you have here. Um, however, that is not the okay. I guess yeah. Okay. So this works fine for your example data set. It's not going to work fine for our for our training data set. Okay. Never mind. It's just because that's the format that it's in. Um, also, though, let's see. Um, you're saying that the feature length is ten when you do this, um, and I my guess is you know this 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 obviously works because you're not validating the the length of the feature here. Um, so if we were to look at these data frames. Um, let's look at the X data. Or let me just do this. All right, so this is our X data, yeah. And so there's 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 not ten, there's there's three, um, which is fine, you know, it works. Um, but we we should probably have some validation on this. Um, so, okay, yeah, and if NP is scalar feature S else feature, okay. Um, okay, yeah, record features, features values, okay. Um, yeah, there, there should be a check that uh, we have only four columns, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, if you specify, so if you specify, um, if one were to specify 10 here, that would mean that we should have 10 columns because you're saying that this is a, you know, a vector that's of length 10. Um, mm -hmm. 
uh, yeah, it, it, what the, yeah. Um, and so in this case, obviously we're not, we're not doing validation. I mean, the, the only, I think the only, one of the only places that we're doing validation is in uh, model TensorFlow. Um, but in this case, let's, we'll just put four, um, because that's the correct value. And, uh, we can, we can add it to do for validation. Um, so, or, well, we can just, let's just do the validation. So, um, since we're here, um, all right, so feature, and this is the feature data. So let's see, feature data, feature, um, let's see. Okay, so self.features and self.features is, okay, it looks like, where did self.features, okay, self.features is a simple model. Okay. Um, for feature and record data. Okay. So what we'd need to do is say self dot features um, and then I think features is an array. So so we're looking at features I dot length um, so, so let's say, we're just going to say to add, all right. So we create this extend data, and then power just flickered. Um, and then we say if the feature length, um, you know, it's not equal to the length of extend data, then we raise an issue. Um, raise. Okay. Um, all right, so feature edit name length is whatever the length is, but should be Let's check that out. Um, so 10 should give us an issue. There's no attribute length. Oh, it's self.features. Length is four, but should be 10. All right, great. Um, oops. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, so now that works. So, okay, and we got to make sure to add this model directory to the, okay. So we're going to add this and this, I can show you guys, I don't know if you guys know about it, git add p, but this is a helpful one. So if you want to add things one at a time, you can go in and say git add p and then the file paths. So we can say the classifier and the examples. Um, so we don't want to add this part, but, and we do want to add this part. Um, so just the stuff we did the validation. Um, and then yes, we do, or we're not going to, we're not going to do that right now. So, uh, but wait, where's our change to four? Why didn't I not pick that up? That's weird. It didn't pick that up. 
We just want the change to four. Oh, because I did Q. No. Yes. All right. So now if we look at the stage changes, then we can see that, you know, all, only the assertion error changes um, are, are ready to be to be committed. And if we do a diff, we can see the rest of them are still still sitting there. So, all right. So let's commit that. Um, model XG boost uh, classifier. Add um, feature length validation. All right, great. Um, so now back to the example. Um, all right, and we'll remove this breakpoint here. So we have four features, and I think we can copy this actually from the from the TensorFlow stuff. Um, so, Vim, where's this docs? Um, oh, right, yeah, this guy. Oh, this is an old example that <laughs> ended up here, huh? So we put classifications. Oh, and this is another thing with these backslashes. So they're being highlighted right now. You have to put R if you're going to do backslashes because or else you have to double escape things. And R says treat this as a raw string. So don't do not do escaping because otherwise you would have to do backslash backslash. Um, and your editor may or may not highlight that type of thing for you. So predict is, um, in this case, um, Let's see, what do we have in this one? Classification. Predict is classification. Aptly named. And then we have our features. And then we want, um, so, directory, um, model, And we just go and we copy all of these things over here. So max depth. And unfortunately, this is one of the open issues that we have right now is that these um, we, we need to modify some of the config code to convert these underscores to dashes because that's not 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 ideal. Learning rate 0.01. And estimators. All right. Yeah, I, I tried to cover all those parameters uh, that are present in the Xboost classifier. Cool. But still, some of them left. So all I'm right. working on that. So yeah, so that I will cover all the parameters. Okay, so you mean uh, you mean make them available as config options? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and is so one thing to check when you're doing something like this is if it's written in um, if the doc string is a NumPy doc string, um, because we have something that will parse NumPy doc strings and generate a config class for for the for anything that we're wrapping that is a NumPy doc string. Um, so we'll we'll do this and then we'll talk about that. Um, so let me make sure that I note that down. So. Um, uh, numpy doc string make config numpy. Okay. Um, all right. So this is the train command, and then we basically uh, just. I think I think in train command, uh, we also need to define the model xz classifier. Oh yes, thank you. Obviously, <laughs> actually, that is yeah, a good. All of these need to say model. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so model and then XG boost classifier. Um, 
just XZ classifier, right? XZ yeah. classifier, okay. That's the entry point. Okay, great. Um, okay, and then we need our sources, obviously. XG classifier, or I'll just look at that. XG, I think, yep. Oh, it's right above me, isn't it? Yeah, XGP classifier. Forgot what file I was in. All right, so yeah, just here. And then we need our sources, of course. So sources. Um, uh. Okay, so training does CSV, and I think we're good to go there. So. Run the train command, and this is so. This is another thing, right? We specified all of that that stuff on the command line, right? Um, let's see, or let's see where. How is this written? Um, so, yeah, it looks like you have train. You create the classifier and you dump it to joblib, and then you so you dump it with joblib. And so you don't need to, yeah, we don't need to specify any of these things uh, again, except for the directory. Um, wait a minute, did I cut off one of these? I think I did. I cut off the subsample, I believe. Yeah, okay. So we don't need to specify any of this the second time around because that's all saved. Um, accuracy. and then make predictions. All right. All right, all right, there we go. So this should be good for us. Now we're just gonna run that test. Um, Python. Is it um, oh, where to go? Oh, it's not installed. Obviously, that would be important. Got to register the entry point, um, and apparently, update XGBoost. Pip install hyphen e. What what this command do? So this is so this command. Let's see. Is the same. So when you're looking at the install or not? Yeah. So this is where it is contributing and getting set up to work on DFFML. So when you're looking at these docs here. Um, it tells you to do dash E and dash E is to install, let's see. Yeah. Well, maybe it doesn't explain it, but that is to install it in development mode um, is the dash E flag. And that basically just says um, that, that, that just means don't make a copy. Don't, because what it'll do is it'll build as like a zip file or a tar file of the co code and then install that and uh, extract that to site packages. Um, and then it'll be where the rest of the Python modules are installed. And so if you do that, if you don't do it with dash E, it'll, it'll, you know, basically make a copy and then your changes won't, won't be, you know, it won't, Python won't pick up your changes, um, as you, as you're changing your local files. So, and this is how you, for example, yeah, reinstall just one thing. Um, so Python dash M pip. Yeah, that's cool. So let's see. And yeah, so there's there's all sorts of issues with all sorts of stuff, which is uh, force reinstall. Okay, this should do it for us.
Yeah, shit. Fuck. All right. This may have. Um, oh god, yeah. Okay, this created a giant mess. Um, god, this stupid packaging stuff is a freaking pain in the ass. Um, okay. Um, yeah, that decided to reinstall um, DFFML as the production version of DFFML, which is not what we wanted. Um, so let's just try this model XG boost. Um, and let's use the damn use feature equals 2020 resolver. Luckily, we got to We have another open issue where we need to go through and take out all those use feature 2020 resolvers because we had to change everything to use it because of all these machine learning packages depend on a bunch of different versions of each other. Um, and uh, when you install them all at once in one environment, which is part of the goal of DFFML is to be able to do that, you get massive, massive issues. Um, and so luckily PIP has released this new, what they call a dependency resolver, which makes sure that all the versions are what they should be um, so that everybody can use, you know, finds the most compatible version for everybody. Um, and um, and so now, now that is the default, so we can take away all of those. Um, okay, there we go. Mm. No such file or directory training.csv. Um, training. Oh, did I? I put. I, I just put training. Oh, and this one should be test as well. So what it does is, okay, great. And I'll scroll back up through this when we're done. Oh, oh, yes, I screwed up that command. Predict all. Yeah, we'll run this one more time and I'll scroll up through it, but it's gonna just dump every command that it runs. So it creates a temporary directory for each test. Okay, that might be a lot of records. Okay, now we're good. I think this is the start of this test. Okay, so here's the start of this test. So it, it's going to dump out every command that it runs with some context around that. So basically, you know, where is it running? And it's running um, in this temporary directory. Um, so it downloads, we tell it to download the files. So it runs those wgit commands. And then it runs the sed commands. So it's just going to run every command that we told it to run. Um, and in this temporary directory. Um, and spit out the results to the console. Um, it won't do any comparison of the console stuff. So if you want to do comparison, then you've got to read the documentation page here, which is I'm contributing console tests. And I'll tell you how to do a comparison to gate things on comparing the output. Um, but yeah, so basically that that is how you add the examples. And now this will show up under, um, let's see plugins um, XG boost so really it didn't jump right there okay yeah, there we go. Cool. yeah. so yeah so this is okay it looks like we have Python example for this one um, and so yeah it'll show up you know more like um, this right it'll look like this um, all right cool so any yeah any questions on this or Mm, no, I think it's uh, it's very cool. So add this, and do I need to add this for the regressor as well? Um, okay, no, you because... don't need you don't need to do that for the regressor within the scope of your pull request. Um, but you, uh, but you know, if you, if you wanted to go create, actually, that would be a good thing to create an issue about because I now you know as we just saw, we 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 don't have that in there either. Um, so it would be good to go add example usage from Python for the regress or from the command line for the regressor. So, so if you could add an issue for that, that would be great. Okay, cool. So that we can track that. So we'll add an issue to track. Um, uh, Lack of console tests in regressor or lots of console examples in regressor. Okay, and let me just commit this stuff. So let's look at what we've got here. Um, and okay. Um, Uh, 
All right, yeah, so this is adding the examples, and then this is the um, how you run them. Basically, just import run console test and pass it to class. All right. Okay, and then, oh, the last thing I noticed here was, okay, this model directory is being created. Um, and I think that's from running, which is weird because... So this, yeah, I believe it's from this. And the weird part about this is that you should be in a... Um, should be in a oh it's because we're overwriting the setup class method okay yeah so we just need to make sure that we call um, we call this the super method here uh, because it should be putting us in our own temporary directory um, and it was not because we uh, we weren't calling the the, the parent parent classes um, set up and tear down methods so let's try running that. Um, or well, I guess we need to destroy the model directory, don't we? Okay, great. Um, and no model directory now. Okay, cool. So yeah, we just were missing those there. Um, so we'll add this um, stuff here, which was uh, model XG boost uh, classifier um, uh, command line examples. And then we will, let's see. Um, yeah, we'll add this stuff. Um, so, and I'm just going to actually put this stuff under the rest of the work that you did. Um, so I'm going to rebase it and let's see. Added more tests. Okay. Update status file. Okay. Oh, and let's look at this actually because this might be a good thing to talk about. So, it looks like you're okay. So. What we like to do, let's see, command line examples, all of this is going to get squashed into one commit, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but just from a, from a general, from a general um, pull request review and, and style uh, standpoint, um, I think we're missing a space in front of model here. Not a big deal. Um, but And then we're also missing capitalization on the first letter here of every um, thing after the colon. Um, and then... Yeah, if you do these and then, uh, so if you make commits and then you, you, you know, you, you fix things, right? So you, you, you fix things along the way. Um, what is helpful is as you get closer to the point where you're looking for a review is to merge the, um, merge, merge any related um, commits into the same commit right um or or split things out into different commits um and and really i mean you you it looks like you're doing a good job of of uh creating commits for um various things like like smaller commits as you fix things which is great um let's see um uh let's see where did this go yeah. So yeah, you're you're committing as you go along, and then if you go and you go and you're you're getting ready to um, submit the pull request, right, and submit it for final review. Each of each of these, yeah, it looks like most of these would would be good fits for just meshing into the um, uh, the the previous commit. So you just go through and and you you melt them into the previous commit by doing a uh, uh, a fix up. Um, so let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that was what I did here by doing, um, you know, F, um, and that basically takes this commit and it makes it a part of this commit before it. Um, 
so and it's not a big deal um like especially with this one you know it's just sort of more more for for your own practice um i was telling people a while ago you know this is you know most most of the things we do here we can squash um before we do the merge but this is sort of like just 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 so that we're all doing good um uh good it's it's good um practice for contributing to, to larger projects um, because especially as as you get more complex changes um, with more more um, more complex yeah more complex stuff and and just more detailed and the reviews take longer um, it helps to have the reviews it helps reviewers to have your changes um, as as organized as possible um, and and that that has to do with um, you know the commits themselves so anyways yeah so just some just background on that um all right so i'm gonna push this stuff up and then um and then we should be then it looks like maybe what else was there anything else here that we talked about in terms of this pull request or i think we may be missing get diff stat um um let's see where did you split off from master here? So git diff stat. This will show us all the files that were changed. So I think, yeah, okay, XG boost. This should be good. Um, I, I think let's let's double check. We'll we'll look at the. Was there anything else that we noted? Oh yeah, we wanted to talk about the make config numpy. Um, so if for example, we ran into this with the auto SK learn uh, recently, but um, so I can show you for auto SK learn. Uh, yeah, I, I've also tried to find out or uh, to figure out that the test case of SK learn is uh, running, I think, for an R. Yeah. Of, yeah, but I didn't find anything that's how it's happening. So, yeah, that's sort of where I, I got on... stuck too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm working on it, but still, I didn't find anything. So okay. let's see. Yeah, no worries, and that's that's you know that's that's part of why I had that one assigned to myself because it seemed like a little bit tricky. Um, and I I didn't you know yeah. if you if you wanna if you wanna dig on that one, you know, more power to you. That's awesome. <laughs> I you know I, <laughs> we will all be grateful for to, to you. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know what the hell is going on there. That's a really weird thing, and 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 it may be something to do with the console test stuff even. Um, I don't know what's going on there, but it seems like when I added the last lines about running the final test file, that's when it started to blow up in time, um, the final Python test and running that. Um, so you might try taking that that last little section there out where it runs that Python test file and doing something more like what you've done here, um, where you actually... Um, yeah, where you actually ran the test file just by itself within the module tests, um, that might yeah. be the that might be the solution here um, for that one. Yep, yep. Cool. Um, actually, that's a good good related point there. Um, so let's see. Um, in this, just to go talk about this NumPy doc string stuff. Basically, what we're talking about here is when we have to create these config objects like this and we have to go and, and usually we're, we're wrapping some class, right? And so in this case, we're wrapping the instantiation of, of XG boost. Well, in the auto SK learn classifier, um, in the auto SK learn case, um, we're wrapping essentially their subclasses of this class here, which is this estimator class. And so, you know, just like with XG boost, we'd be passing all of these parameters. With us, auto SK learn, we're passing all of these parameters. So they're documented in the NumPy style doc string format, um, which is this. And so what we can do is we can take, um, we have we have a, a function called make config NumPy, I believe. And it parses it parses this doc string to come up with what the config structure should be here um, and so actually the change um, uh, make config numpy the change was this so basically we've I, we went did some digging found out that this init method is what we want to look at and we can just basically call this function and just like we have xpg uh, classifier model config we can say auto sk learn config equals make numpy config pass it the name of the class and then you just say uh, the next argument is the function that has that doc string 
or if it's the class that has the doc string, you just pass the class and then any additional properties that you want to add to it um, with their type and their field. Um, so for XG classifier, um, the class that we're wrapping is, um, is where is it? XG classifier aptly named. Um, Let's see, API reference, perfect. Um, okay, where is the classifier itself? There we go. Okay, and this doesn't have a source on it, that's annoying. Okay, where is the code? Okay. Yeah, so where is the code for this? Where is the definition? Um, okay. Probably in here. Or, from sklearn import. Okay, well, okay. Maybe, oh, they've must have integrated this into SK learn, which would explain that traceback we saw earlier. And if it's in SK learn, then it probably has a NumPy style drock string. Um, where is it? Um, all right. Just, I think this is our last thing that we need to talk about. Um, Oh, but the last thing was the default values. Is this related to the default values with what they should be? or Because um, you said the default values are not what they should be with something related to the classifier. Yeah. Is this, is it related to the, are you kidding me? What are you importing from then? Is it related to the config stuff here? What you're talking about there or? No, no, no. Default. The default things are, I think, different. Okay. Um, well, yeah. we can't find it, so I'm not sure. So we'll just we we don't really need to talk about that anymore. Um, but you guys get the yeah. picture, basically. If you find if you find that something has a NumPy style doc string, if you can find where it is and you can look at the doc string, I guess we could look at the doc string by pulling it up in Python. But we won't spend more time on that. Um, then you can just call that make make config NumPy, uh, and I'll just put the example um, example. Um, HPS github.com slash intel slash dfl slash commit. Um, let's make sure that's correct. Okay, yeah, so this is the example for this one. Um, and I think, oh, this, this don't worry about this, um, but it's this change here. So if you find that, then you can use that function. Um, all right. So and then the last thing we need yep. to cover um, is, OK, we also need to cover that async IO thing. But so we found out the default values are not what they should be. What do you mean by that? Uh, actually, um, just just search for the exeboost regressor, let's see. OK. And yeah. OK. With, um... And just. You mean in, in here, you, the regressor, or? Yeah, yeah. And all these things, uh, the parameters are there, max depth and the uh, gamma and jobs and all these oh, parameters, okay. the default the default values of uh, all these parameters are not actual default. Uh, that is found on the XZ boost regressors uh, library. All right, so for the regressor, the defaults in the config are yeah. now what they are stated to be in the docs for XG boost. All right, okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, I, so I, I think this I just, may I, be related then, yeah. 
I just found that issue with the XZ Boost regressor, but maybe uh, th that's also been issue for the other models as well. Yeah, so and just, so and this is where using that function, the make config numpy, allows us to just grab the defaults out of the uh, out of whatever the the class is, right? So that's <laughs> that's why that's uh, that that's why that's been okay. useful. So let's let's okay. just try looking at it and see XG Boost. Um, since since this is this is actually the problem, um, so let's just check out the doc string here. Oops. Okay. Uh, and yes, it looks like a NumPy style doc string. So, but it does not have default values involved. But I think we should be able to pick up the defaults from the. Um, okay. Um, so config numpy um oh, config numpy oops okay um let's instantiate it and see what's up Okay, so it only got objective. Um, what's up with that? Um, let's see, where's objective? Objective. For some reason, this is the only thing that it picked up. That's weird. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, so what the hell? That's really odd. Um, that must be the only thing. Oh, it's all in KW args. Um, arguments for the XUG booster objects full documentation found at here aha okay so okay we're answering our questions now um okay general parameters okay yeah. well, what class yeah, is this yeah this 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 is what we're looking for here um yeah. so and what i guess the, the question is xg regressor um so and they're saying booster so is there a booster somewhere or do we have to import that from scikit-learn it's unsupported by scikit-learn keyword arguments for the booster object full documentation yeah okay so this is yeah this is weird because yeah, they must be doing. They must be doing. Yeah, they must. They must be doing the KW args, the star star KW args, because it would otherwise inspect the. The difference between this and the auto SK learn one is that all of these are spelled out here, um, and there's no star star KW args. When they do star star KW args, we can't inspect it and see what's going on. Um, so it might be. Um, yeah, this is, this is a trickier one. Um, unfortunately, yeah, if we can find, I think the thing is, this is another one where with auto SK learn, I had to find the base class here and then point it at the base class. So if we can find the base class, we could point it at the base class. We just need to find it. Um, so we'll make a note of that. So, uh, tried doing... Um, so we tried doing this, and this is what happened. Um, so the, the issue is that so we only get uh, objective because star star kw args is being used we uh, if we want to keep the defaults in sync with uh, upstream upstream is wherever we're getting this from so the actual XG boost project uh, recommendations 
um, we should uh, find the base class uh, that doesn't uh, accept or find the base class uh, and point make numpy config at that class. Similarly to so similarly to what was done with auto SK learn. All right. Okay. All right. So there w those were kind of related. All right. Um, and then our last thing, do you have anything else on the XGBoost stuff Do you wanted to talk about? Yeah, no, no, I think that's it. Okay, cool. And then the last, and, yes, sorry, go for it. And just please upload that, uh, this video on YouTube. As, oh, yes. As, uh, you, you get the time because I think I need to watch this as a multiple times. Please, so. please remind me, please remind me. Because I will do it as soon as we, you know, I'm going to open YouTube right now. And then, um, well, okay. So let me, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it as soon as it's, it's going to suck up tab memory. Um, yeah, okay. So cool. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do it as soon as we're done here. So. All right, and then so the last thing was that we have an issue with the async IO part of accuracy scores, um, and so let's pull that down and, and look at that. Um, yep, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Good stuff. Um, all right, so uh, hello, John. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so about that. So I've actually fixed that issue. Oh, yay. Well, that was the easiest, yeah. easiest um, fix then. <laughs> well, easy, easy, so, uh, easy for me comparatively while I was talking. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, now there's like another problem uh, with the transformers. Okay. Oh, okay. Was this yeah. part of where what was this? Yeah, yeah. I made three commits. So actually, like I was changing the docs of the accuracy. So okay. if we hadn't provided that score or thing, so I actually did that. And like some other uh, tests, uh, I provided that score. Okay. Oh, I see. Actually running the async IO part. Okay. Oh, because so it was trying to. It was trying to pull. It was trying to a enter this. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks, Shaw. I saw your saw your message. Thanks for. Jumping on, it was great to have you here. Thank you, John. Bye. Bye. All right. Yeah. So it was trying to do the A enter on this guy, and then obviously that was yeah. failing. Ah, good catch. Good job. Yes. So uh, now, like, there's there's like tests are failing in the transformers. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, I saw what that. Going. What was up with that? I think is it failing on master too? Um. Oh, wrong. Uh, um, um, I'm not aware like what's the okay. most. Yeah, let's see. Oh, and I think somebody pointed out, I think it was you, Nitesh, that pointed out that, that, okay, yeah, and we closed that issue about um, that failure to connect there. Oh, and I should also say that I was using this label um, as, so if we have random, since there's so many random CI failures that are not our, our fault, like for example, this one happened the other day, and they had this issue where they published a new release and then they s screwed up something and it was breaking everybody's stuff. Um, so um, I'm trying to tag things that are not our fault with kind of CI failing. Um, so that if, if, because there's so many things where, you know, we go do a build and then we're like, oh no, man, like what happened here? Um, yeah. actually, and, and so I'm trying to, if you find an issue, then, then, you know, or if you find something like that, um, put a new issue and then I'll try to label it like that. Um, and sure. actually, let's see, um, to go along with that, um, the, the stupid, um, example, should I, um, NPM audit failure. Okay. That one happens intermittently. All right. Um, but what we're talking about is transformers. Oh. So what's going on with it? Uh, so actually, the model is not getting trained. It's not getting and, trained. 
Yes, and that's why uh, train model for first. all the predict and accuracy, it's saying train the model first. Oh, you know, this looks like yeah. a um, this looks like a uh, issue where transformers got updated to a later version, and now we are. Um, yeah, you know, this looks like something where we transformers got updated to a newer version, and now we're. Um, we're accessing things that are no longer present in the newer version, so we may just need to pin the oh, version yes. of Transformers. Okay. Yeah, let me rerun the CI on Master here, and then we'll we'll just double check that that's the case. Um, uh, but yeah, I expect... So, uh, Transformers, they have actually released a version. Oh, they December have? December 9th. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, and this when is 9th. this... Let's see. Well, that's that's okay. So here's that's a good question on when was this run five days ago? That's yeah, maybe that might be overlapping here. Um, or not TensorFlow Transformers. Yeah, okay. So the, the yeah that that's that's we'll rerun here and then. Um, but I think our we may just end up pinning it. Um, so because I don't think there's been any changes made to get fetch origin so get diff origin master model transformers um okay wait a minute it looks like transformers accuracy model transformers okay this is all your yeah you're adding accuracy stuff um, classification accuracy. Okay, this is all. Yeah, I don't think we've made any changes to transformers. Um, that you uh, don't. Yeah, like previously, like just before the commits which I added today, right now, the transformers tests were actually passing. Okay, yeah. So it must be a version update thing because obviously we yeah. haven't touched transformers. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Okay, and there is. Let's see the requirements, txt. Okay, we got that one. Okay, but this is restricting the version range, which is interesting. Um, okay, well, we'll we re-ran master, and let's just make let's just make a note. Can you comment in the or all comment in the pull request and say um, we are seeing an issue with transformers. Um, not sure if it's a versioning issue or not. Uh, Rerunning the CI in master to double check. That sound good? Uh, yes. All right, cool. All right, okay, so that's a plan then. That's our plan. We're going to rerun the CI in master and we're going to, we're just going to validate that there's a problem two places then basically and if there's not then we'll do it we'll just scratch our heads and move from there um but my guess is if yeah if there's still a problem and it's not showing up in master then i think you know we'll call this good with what else we needed one more thing and then we we're going to re okay we just got this so i think we're ready to rebase after we confirm this right yes okay um, yeah, I mean, so we'll, we'll merge this into the, we'll, we'll throw all these commits into the accuracy staging branch and then we'll move on to doing the rebase stuff. And if there's still, if, if we're seeing issues here with transformers that we aren't in master, hopefully the rebase fixes that. Although I think I, I foresee there being problems everywhere. So, yeah. all right. Well, thanks guys. It was uh, great talking to you guys today. Is there anything else? Uh, no, that's it. All right. Great. Thank you both very much. And I will talk to you next week. And, uh, well, I may, I may talk to you this weekend, um, but I'll probably be, um, busy for the next couple days. So just so you know. All right. Thanks guys. Have a good one. Yep. Bye. 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 Hello.